What's good, Bucket Busters? This is your host, Ro Zapanta, and this is my co-host, the glorious, the notorious, Tim Johnson. Rip City! And this is the Busted Bucket Podcast, locally grown here in Portland, Oregon, the city of roses, the city of bridges, Stumptown PDX. We are a show with no rules, just a couple of friends who so happen to love Portland basketball. Tim Johnson. Yes, sir. How you living, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, and let me tell you why. Because we got a special guest today. Yes. In his career, he has covered everything from boxing, golf, and the Olympic yes. Games to your hometown yes. favorites like the Ducks, Beavers, Timbers, and of course, at the top of that list, the Portland Trail Blazers, Big John LaCrofco. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, brother. Thanks, you guys, for having me, man. This is fun. You guys, uh, you guys are no joke. We're getting into it right away. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. That, We're going to get into that, that, that first quarter heat. <laughs> as long as it's you not know, the third quarter heat, right? <laughs> it's true. You know, that fourth quarter heat, that Dame Time heat. And you know, you've seen a lot of Dame Time because currently you work for Blazer Broadcasting. I, I assume as an EVS broadcast equipment operator. And we just kind of want to hear about your job. Tell us, the listeners, um, what that means to be one. Yeah, man. Um... I'm in the truck, I'm in the studio. Uh, anything you're seeing on the broadcast, well, first of all, thanks for having me, man. This is cool. Yeah, anytime, yeah. Anytime I, I, anytime I can talk hoops or anything <laughs> with other people, man, I love it, especially during all these crazy times. So, uh, Blazer Broadcasting, uh, I started in, gosh, I'm getting old, man. And, and this is on Zoom, right? People can see me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah sir. people are going to see you, man. <laughs> make sure you get I got a dimple on this side. Make sure that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Make sure RJ's capturing that, man, right there. Uh, I'm going to be a ratings booster with the ladies. I know that. One. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, it sure isn't uh, me, so. No, on a serious tip, man, I started, I grew up in Northeast Portland, uh, an absolute basketball junkie. I mean, I everything, yeah. basketball, breathe, sleep, eat, however you want to say it. Um, I grew up with uh, Troy Brandon, who played in the NBA, Damon Stoudemire. Uh, and a whole bunch of other names I could throw at you, dudes that went on to play in Europe and definitely D1. So in our neighborhood growing up, you 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 had to play basketball or get out of the way. So as a uh, half Mexican, half Polish, short white kid, uh, <laughs> I, I had a little bit I had a little bit to prove, and uh, I came yeah, through, yeah. man. I got I got fantastic memories of basketball. So the fact that I could turn that into uh, a career, at least how I started, is just a dream come true. Um, Ninety nine. Uh, I started uh, down at the Blazers, Western Conference Finals, Blazers versus, I think, the Lakers back then. I was just pulling cables. Oh, man. The camera guys down on the court, they got to have cables to get that signal out. So I was just a grunt down there doing that. But I had gone to school for television production, and I had just finished, just shot a documentary on hoops with all my boys I grew up with. And so kind of a, a Northeast Portland hoop dreams. And uh, Nice. Yeah, kind of sounds I, like you were shoe in for this. Yeah, business. I just wanted I just wanted to get into the the broadcast part of it, the highlights, the music videos, things like that. So that's basically what you know. Fast forward um, a couple years later, I got invited into the truck, maybe 2000, 2001, and learned. You had mentioned EBS. It's basically uh, for people at home. It's basically just a DVR. It's just a, an industrial size hard drive. It just, I can record so many different things at once, just like your DVRs at home. Oh, so when crazy. Dame, yeah, so when Dame, um, I mean, it's got buttons, it's got crazy lights flashing all over the place. But uh, say Dame gets the ball, comes down, fast break three pointer, turns around, and we've all seen him do this, right? Right. Yeah. I've, got, I've got 15 angles of that. So when you see those instant replays in super slow mo and you see all the crazy action and the bench react where it's boom, 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 different angles of it, that's us, that's me. That's um, awesome. And we save every single play in a game. I mean, I'm saving. I mean, last night, who did we play? Remind me. My mind's my mind's Sacramento. Right. Sacramento. Queens. Yeah. yeah. De'Aaron Fox, <laughs> fast break. You know, De'Aaron fa- fast break three. Barnes, Alley, uh, you know, Wiseman, yeah. uh, all those guys. Uh, I'm sorry, Bag- Bagwell, Bagmore. Bagley. Bag- Bagley. Bagley. Yeah, Bagley. That's the one thing. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, but, but, you know, every single play we save, label, archive. So the next time I play the Kings and we go down yeah. there, I can plug my drives in. And if I want to do a De'Aaron Fox, 
you know, you guys see the stuff pre-tip where Jordan mm -hmm. and Lamar are talking about the highlights and mm -hmm. you see all the highlights from previous games. Uh, that's all me. I just grab that stuff and go um, edit it together on the fly. And uh, it is very fast. It's very fun. Um, you must be coming, really coming good into at multitasking. Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have to be, man. It's crazy. And like I tell people, man, when you screw up at work, when the average person screws up at work, no one else sees it, man. You just cover it up real quick. But if mm -hmm. I rewind on air or if I'm doing the wrong thing, man, a lot of people see it. Right. Uh, yeah. How but, so so I got to so no ask, pressure. though. Yeah. I got to ask, has that happened to you? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me finish what I said real quick, though. Going sure. into the fourth going into the fourth quarter, you guys always hear music videos? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm cutting those during the show. So oh, during wow. highlights oh, and during that stuff, I'm slamming that stuff together. So not only are you are you looking at what's what's being recorded currently, you're also working on those music videos. Yeah. And you're piecing so, everything together. Dude, you are my hero. That is insane. On the fly. It can be really fast. And, you know, we're in New York and you know, I'm gonna use some old Nas, so I'm gonna use some old Jay Z or some music like mm -hmm. that. I'll pick music wherever we are. I'll use blues music in Memphis and Okay. Some great, uh, great, you know, Zydeco in New Orleans and stuff. But you're just piecing it yeah. together. You know, if I look so and I see safe. Zion, I see Zion wink at my camera. I'm saving <laughs> just that. I'm saving just that. And then I know Dane crossed him over, you know, and I'm using <laughs> that. So it's fun, man. You're just, you're basically just telling a story. And awesome. uh, you're an auteur. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google what that is. <laughs> you're Bro, a director. I, I don't use you're a director. Words, it's like but, a, it's a, yeah. it's a film. Uh, film phrase I I've guess. gotten by on my looks all this time and I'm not <laughs> uh but no multitasking. Yeah, multi yeah I'm sorry Tim you asked me a question I totally interrupted you uh that's okay I completely forgot it so we can keep going you know <laughs> I actually had a question um yeah, yeah. I might be putting you on the spot here but is there anyone that you've seen on video as you're capturing like live and then you see them in person, like on the court, and you're like, wow, they are either faster than I thought they were, bigger than I thought they were, better than I thought they were, just from video. Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind like that? Um, I kind of got over, I started traveling with the team halfway through the 04, 05 season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was, we had just traded Sheed. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I grew up with Damon Stoudemire, so Damon was still on the team, that was funny. You should have seen his face when I walked on the plane on Mr. Allen's oh, that's plane. <laughs> I told him, I said, hey, brother, I said, I told you we we're going to both make the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was funny. But that team had Zebo and, and uh, uh -huh. Stopper, Ruben Patterson and everybody. But yep, yeah. to answer the question, I, I think it kind of, it kind of, it didn't wear off ever. Like it's never worn off. But I mean, at first I'm like, damn, you know, that dude is, Zebo's tall as hell and wide. <laughs> And right. so and so, you know, because I just you're not up close, you don't know. Um, yeah. But as far as seeing stuff on the court, see them do stuff and then be surprised. I mean, first of all, they're all amazing athletes, most of them. Yeah. Uh, but, but as far as um, seeing them do things, nah, because I was a hoop junkie, and I, you know, even right. when, you know, when did the NBA league pass come out? Two thousand is when it started. You guys are too young to remember that. But, <laughs> You know, I, I was watching. Far, I was, I was, <laughs> I was recording on VHS five games a night and watching them anyway. I'm, I'm just a basketball junkie, so no one does yeah. anything out there that I'm like, damn. Uh, they'll be sick place. Don't get me wrong, man. You know, mm -hmm. Dame's doing stuff out there, and like I said, Zion earlier, guys are doing different things out there that still to this day blow me away as a as a lifelong hoop fan. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than just initially being shocked at the size of these guys or being in an elevator. I'll never forget being in an elevator in San Francisco at our hotel. We had come in, it was like two in the morning from a road trip. And uh, I'm sitting there and it's like Marcus Camby and LaMarcus oh, and all dude. these dudes, you know, and I'm yeah. short as it is, man. And then, <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is I look up and it's Dave Chappelle's in the, in the, Dave Chappelle's in the elevator with us. No way. I'm Crazy. Right there. Cause this is, this is when he had disappeared and he was living in San Francisco working small clubs. Yeah. And uh, I just felt good that there was another dude in there my height because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, man, those guys don't. First time I saw Shaq in person um, when I was real new, that was probably one of the ones where I was like, God damn, that dude is huge. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I met Moses Malone uh, and, and who was one of my favorite players oh, growing man, up. Oh, man, Moses. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he had come and we were in Houston and he was looking for Maurice Lucas to say what's up. 
and he oh, grabbed man. my shoulder and said, hey, young man, where's Luke at? And I almost like fell over. He was so big. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, sorry to go on and on, bro. But yeah, these guys, man, I kind of, you kind of know going in. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. see, yeah. You know, someone that I want to see live is, is Zion, just because he looks like a linebacker or even like an old lineman. He looks like he's but as he wide jump, as he is tall. He could jump out of the gym, though. It's like he defies yeah. all sorts of gravity, you know? I'm a huge fan of that dude. I already mentioned him before, man. I'm just a huge fan. I just yeah, love that because yeah. my favorite player growing up was Charles Barkley. Uh, and I love LJ, Larry Johnson and stuff. So I like those. That's, you know, I'm kind of built. Right like, Who's this? Charles, Charles Barkley right here? Barkley, Charles. <laughs> you have dude. this guy? Uh, I don't have that one. That's great, though. I like that. We have Lukovka on the show and Barkley. Dang. <laughs> uh, hey, but you said that... If, just thinking you said is anything surprised me uh i've done golf for years too i, I worked uh, for the golf channel oh yeah yeah the, li- the live from show that you would see um it's kind of their sports center on the road at the majors i did that for like 10 11 years and just hanging out before we went on air and hanging out before i started working on the driving range mm-hmm. and the funny thing is that was probably the most impressed i've ever been like at a sporting event was seeing some random dude i didn't even know like a, like a guy that had never won a tournament. I'm mm-hmm. sitting there just relaxing and he'll go, hey, I'm gonna hit it. And on the third bounce on the green, it's gonna go right. And then he'd just do it. Oh, that's and, crazy. And, the, that's the, and the caddy's like, no, 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 let's try on the first bounce, have it go left. And he could just do it. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Yeah. You know, so, so probably sports wise, people wouldn't think that golf, you know, would be the most impressed thing you've ever been around when you work in the NBA. But the fact, that's a skill, dude. Some of those guys, that blows yeah. me away. And the fact that I didn't even know who it was, you know what I mean? It wasn't like it was, you know, Tiger or Phil or someone. It was just some random cat probably working at 7-Eleven <laughs> right now. <laughs> that that does take a lot of skill. Golf takes a lot of skill. Yeah. I mean, me and Tim have definitely have experience in just hidden balls at trees, getting lost. Yeah. Pretty much just hope <laughs> for the best, right? right. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, as long as I can make contact with the ball, I'm good. <laughs> and you know you've you've told us pretty much you've worked in a lot of different sports what yeah. keeps you coming back i guess to working with the blazers um uh, just a, being a hoop junkie is probably the number one thing i mean yeah. the average dude the average dude's gonna say you know the paycheck um right right in live broad in, in in live tv what we're doing we are we are compensated because it's just a crazy ass skill we have Mm-hmm. Uh, at least the job I do. There's not a lot, you know, of people out there that do that. Are there um, are there times where you kind of wish you were in more of a like a, a bigger market, maybe? Like, is there uh, is there any time like because you could you with your skills you could you could work for any team, right? Yeah. I mean, you could yeah. work for any broadcasting team. Oh so. yeah, and and in the past when we get knocked out in the first round, and and as long as I've been in the league, I you know you get to meet people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the past, I I worked for the Clippers during the playoffs. And okay. I've worked, I worked for, you know, Golden State. And I've worked for the Spurs and the Nuggets. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because you know the guys, they know you, and they mm-hmm. know that I travel with the Blazers. And so they're like, yeah, this guy'd be great yeah. on a show. Because things thin out during the playoffs normally because baseball kicks in. Mm-hmm. So they, they need some more people. Um, so, yeah, I've worked for other people. Um, bigger market-wise, I kind of am in a situation in my career. Well, this last year, that's a whole other thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I was at a point where I'm so busy from – the first preseason game to the last playoff game, you know, mm-hmm. six months out of the year, that the rest of the year, I, I, I kind of pick and choose what I do. Okay. Um, Timbers, uh, mm-hmm. which is not a lot of games. And mm-hmm. then, you know, every four years, the Olympics, you know, so that's like a big three week chunk of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't do golf anymore. They started doing stuff out of the studio at the golf channel instead of my job. So I lost some work, but I did, uh, I worked HBO boxing for 12 years. Oh, that's uh, sick. Yeah, that was fantastic. And they were great, man, because they understood my schedule. So as soon as the NBA season was, o- was over, boom, I'd start there. So pretty much like Cinco de Mayo weekend, I'd start with a huge fight. Uh, That's you know, awesome. Uh, Floyd Mayweather or Triple G or somebody, uh, Canelo, a huge fight, and then work through Halloween with them. So I didn't need to be in L.A. or San Francisco or New York or somewhere mm-hmm. like that. Um, I really lucked out and was able to uh, – was able to – you know stay busy where we are and now man uh, on a personal side i got um i have kids now uh, mm-hmm. oh, for man. a while now how many i've missed well let's see how many are we counting no. <laughs> how many legitimate <laughs> well at least at least the ones That's that i'm right now, at least the ones i'm getting tax credits for 
Don't tell my wife, dude. She's done. She's going to get Yeah, pissed. let's not get you in trouble, man. Let's not get you in I'll trouble. Blame, I'll blame you guys, man. Yeah, that's okay. We'll take the heat. <laughs> no, on a serious tip, my son Miles uh, is 19. And, nice. uh, and my daughter, Olivia, is uh, about to be 16 next week. So right college on. sophomore slash freshman and mm-hmm. uh, high, sc- high school sophomore. But anyway, that just having them and missing so much i mean dude i've missed so many games and plays and mm-hmm. you know everywhere it's the team's at i'm there so we're going on a 13 day trip you miss a lot of stuff so mm-hmm. i've wound down a little bit and slowed a little bit and luckily i'm just in the point of my career i was able to do that and know that they call me back um but yeah i just you grind you definitely grind uh it's worth it man i've had real jobs i was in the army and then i washed car right before i was doing this i was washing cars at a car lot before oh, I went wow. to before I went to school for television production at Mount Hood, I was uh, detailing cars and washing car to car lot for minimum wage for Dang. eight years. You yeah, came up, man! What a jump! Oh, yeah. I tried to. I tried to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just playing hoops, man. City <laughs> leagues three times a week, and my girlfriend uh, at the time I was with her for years and years, six years. Mm-hmm. She told me uh, it was it was over. All I did was uh, either watch basketball or play basketball, and I, nothing was going to come of that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope her husband's watching this podcast with me on it right now. What's up? <laughs> Shout out. Right? Yeah. Not that, not that I'm the Kermit that's, the Frog thing, right? That's some, that's some heavy <laughs> shade go. right there. <laughs> I hope he follows me on Twitter. Yeah, you got to stick that pinky out too. Right? I know, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice, man. Well, hey, we might as well just jump right into the Portland questions. Mm-hmm. Um you said you were you were born and raised here, right in the Rift City, right? Mm-hmm. So, people say that Portland is a small market city, which makes it difficult to draw in marquee players. If Neil O'Shea were to call you for help because he has a quote-unquote high-profile player standing in front of him, as a man that's seen Portland evolve throughout the years, how would you promote the city of Portland to that player? The city itself. Yeah, yeah. What you know? What let's let's expand it. Not just the city, yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know, no, I mean, being cool. from Portland, you you gotta love the city, but also the team too. Like, like, what would you say? I think, I think. Well, first of all, Neil doesn't have my number, so he ain't calling. Me. <laughs> <laughs> this is all hypothetical, of course. Right. Is I do that remember because I, you won't give it to him, or that's it's the other way around. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I do joking, remember. Ke- I do remember at dinner one night, Kevin Pritchard asking me if I'd take Derrick Rose or Michael Beasley once, though. So oh, I did. Dang. Yeah. Um, but Portland didn't take either one of them. No, 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 no. He's saying, <laughs> yeah, he was saying if if we had the number one pick at the time. Uh, uh, got you, got you. No, man. Um, to be honest, man, I think Portland's always been, and nothing's ever changed as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough to sell this city to guys. I mean, it really is, Um, you know, just flat out. It's tough to sell the city. Mm -hmm. I think the selling points are the club itself. I mean, it's I don't know if that's a cop out, but it there's a lot of like culture wise. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, now there's a reason Mello stuck around. Right. Absolutely. You know, and I'm not going to speak for him, but it wasn't it wasn't because of the city. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, I doubt I mean, it wasn't the nightlife. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> so, hey, once again, you were asking me about, you know, working a whole bunch, but now I'm, you know, married with kids. It changes, man. Things change. Yeah. You guys are young, man. You guys are like, what, 19, 20? No. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. I'm just saying, everything changes, man. When you start getting old and you start yeah. getting gray, yeah. things yeah. change. Uh-huh. And I'm quite sure, you know, Mello had a glass of wine with Dame and Dame's like, look, man, I want you here. So it, it was probably a, a Dame situation that sold mm-hmm. him. It's probably, like you said, a culture thing. CJ, mm-hmm. it's, you know, the yeah. history of the club taking care of its players. Yeah. Uh, usually, and you guys know this, usually it's the fans. I mean, that's a huge selling point. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many guys, you know, leave here and then talk about how much they miss the fans? I see our players all the time. Guys that used to be on the team, Ed Davis, mm-hmm. Myers Leonard, Jamal Crawford. I mean, I'm cool yeah. with all these guys. Jake yeah. Lehman and it goes on and on. Mm-hmm. And they like the first time when they see me, you know, in the loading dock when we're in the TV truck and they're walking by, they're like, man, we miss Portland, man. We miss the fans, blah, blah, blah. And there <laughs> are some crazy. dudes. 
there are some dudes, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, st I I'm still in touch with Victor Clavera, like on Twitter. Oh, He's nice. Like, hey, Dang. You know, random ass dudes like that. Uh -huh. uh, Rudy Fernandez loved Portland, man, because mm -hmm. of the because of the food. I mean, there's yeah. there's so many different things, and you know there is that small market thing going on. So that's a whole another mm -hmm. thing that they have to sell. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it, it's a tough one. I think it, it, I don't think it's just one thing. I think it's a combination. And you know, Sacramento's a small town, you know, but they don't have the the you know they had to run there for a little bit, but they don't have the history of being a you know a quality teams like we've mm -hmm. put out there. So right. that's going to be even tougher sell. You know, um, I, I have another question for you. Um, you had mentioned uh, guys missing the fans, and, and I'm curious because, you know, I imagine as a player, granted, I've never been in that situation, but I imagine that as a player, you kind of have to say that, you know, Team X, Y, Z, whatever team you're on, has the best fans in the league, right? Like, you're kind of obliged, you're obligated to say that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my, my question for you is, is it true that the and you because you've been to all these different arenas? Is it true that Portland has one of the loudest arenas? How about passionate fans? Passionate fans? Like okay. if you were to measure, if you were to measure loud, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Golden State in the last nine years, but you know what? Half of that yeah. brother is because it's the oldest arena. It's got a concrete roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could be up there yelling. You're going to hear me. It bounces everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. But they weren't like that for the 15 years before when they sucked, you know, when they right. weren't, you know, good. Where it seems like the Blazers, I mean, they had, we had our down years there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the crowd always was crazy. And yeah. I will say, if you, if you were to pose that question where, oh, hold, look at this. I got people texting me. We see you on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you We know you're an important man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Oh, Rose, they all say hi. Tim, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. All right. We'll send you the link. Say what's up. Yep. <laughs> followers, man. It's my social media it was, followers. It was Neil. I finally like gave him Neil. your number, dude. Hey, hey that was Neil. <laughs> saying, don't talk about me. Uh, no, man, but it's just, it's Portland's, the fans are crazy, man. The fans are yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm biased, of course. There are other arenas that are nuts, but uh, mm. a lot of times, a lot, I remember back in the day, we always hear that it, they pumped in all the sound and stuff, you know, like the Pacer games, which is bananas. Like New Orleans, it was just right. pumping noise. So it made it sound like it was louder. But hmm. I know for a fact they don't do that in Portland. So yeah, that's weird. And the Blazers fans, they know what's up. Right on, right on. Yeah, I'm I'm actually curious, um, you know, since you've grown up pretty much in Portland all your life, what have you seen that's like changed in Portland and sort of like what you think is sort of the heart of the city? If you would to call any particular area of Portland the heart of the city. Well, I'm straight up biased, man. I'm born and raised in Northeast Portland. Northeast, I was say, right. it's gotta be Northeast. <laughs> I've, got, I've got an NEP tattoo with a pinwheel on my leg, so. Oh, that's what's nice. nice. Yeah, uh, I'm very biased, but you know, once again, yeah. up, until, up until recently, I mean, it's just been uh -huh. so bad as this last year, but mm -hmm. there has been a huge change around the town. I love, you know, I don't spend any time down there, but I love seeing that the Pearl District is thriving, you know, mm -hmm. when that used to, you know, just be warehouses back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, it's a fine line. My, uh, the South Waterfront, I mean, that's bringing in a lot of business and stuff. My wife works down there. Um, I love seeing, a lot of people don't, but I love seeing um, the Burnside area. I mean, that used to be really, you know, broke down and having issues. And now they're on the east side of the Burnside Bridge. They got some great, biz great businesses there popping up. You got mm -hmm. a lot of infrastructure you got a lot of housing um and you know i know it's give and take uh the mississippi area alberta over here on our side northeast off of fremont yeah. uh the beaumont district it's yeah. tough uh i grew up with a lot of friends of mine whose families lived uh grandparents lived off of alberta and back then man you couldn't go down there i mean it was mm -hmm. you had to be real careful going down there um, yeah yeah i had a hood pass luckily and so all my boys went down there. Uh, they let they let Big John come through. Uh, but, but just seeing that, you know, and now families can be down there, you know, walking around and safe. It is tough to see, you know, you hear the term gentrification and I'm not an expert on that. It is tough to see that. I will admit that I've had a lot of family friends uh, whose families couldn't afford to stay once they started fixing things up. That is tough. Yeah, that absolutely. is something. It's really unfortunate that we can't do both, that you can't. Uh, 
you know, fix up the uh, neighborhood and have businesses come in and stuff without, but that's just natural, man. Those prices start, uh, start popping up. But mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Northeast from the womb to the tomb. I tell people, man. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you know what? Since we're on Zoom and we got, yeah. this, I got to show you. Are we going to see it? Oh, I'm no. afraid about the location, <laughs> man. Where's go. the location of this tattoo? <laughs> I don't. Hey, if he starts, oh, 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 oh. are we gonna get a maturity tag on this pod <laughs> right, on this right, podcast right. now? Oh, all right. Oh yeah, there oh, we go. That is what's up, oh, man. Yo, that's awesome. I did. I did it myself with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a prison tap, man. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, man, but I'm just you know I'm definitely you know where anybody grows up. I would hope you guys would be biased towards your hood too. Um, but no, For man. Sure, I, yeah. Restaurants, breweries some art galleries there's so much stuff over here in the neighborhood that i love uh, mm -hmm. yeah you any, know any, I, uh, place, any place in the city though that's doing good man i'm happy about it that's why we got to get through all this man that's going on right now hopefully yeah, that uh, this all gets handled it's, we can get how we work it's hard to see all these businesses failing for sure i mean some of our favorite places are are going out out of business like we were yeah. ro and i were actually just talking earlier today about pock pock yeah we saw they're gone like it's, yeah, it's yeah. really unfortunate so you know, no, keep your no, head up, Rip City. And, 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 you know, I don't know if we're going to talk later about uh, me starting a podcast during all this, but but the wheels that got spinning, it was, I got to get something like you guys with this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm sure your listeners have heard you talk about why you started this. Mm -hmm. My wheels were spinning about, okay, I got to get this stuff out of my mind. I got to, I can't think about all this crap. Yep. Uh, I got to have some sort of a distraction. And so I started thinking, who do I know? And, and let's talk music and let's talk shoes and let's talk this. And I literally said, well, screw that. I know so many friends of mine that own small businesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I started having my boys on the show. I had at least three mm -hmm. or four of the guys come on and, yeah. uh, you know, just to plug and let them have their story. And right. mm -hmm. that was actually it, I, I just I just recently listened to your um, your podcast with uh, um, Anthony Park. of yes. Dew's Grill. Yeah. Um, and for, for our listeners who are, uh, are curious what we're, we're talking about, uh, John has a, a podcast that he started called Home Trippin' with Big Home John. Home Trippin'. And, yeah, it uh, used to be. It was always, um, I got on Instagram and stuff like that uh, just to show my kids where I was, you know, mm -hmm. and to show my wife where I was. And just, I was always gone with the team. And so yeah, uh, we started doing, uh, and I hashtag everything, road trippin'. Yeah. And so for years, I was doing that. And then I had a show on NBA.com through the Blazers called Road Trippin' with Big John. Mm -hmm. Did uh, somebody take that over? Because I've seen that man. somewhat recently. <laughs> my boy Channing Fry and them tried to take me. I can't oh, yeah? <laughs> and so my boss, my boss, director of broadcasting with the Blazers, lets me. he reminds me every day. Dude, did you read that? Did you hear that last road tripping podcast? It's great. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he's rubbing. I should have trademarked it, dog. <laughs> I should have trade. Right. Uh, but yeah. that's that's where that came from. It was just road tripping, and it was fun, man. I did it. It was it was during the B Roy, Rudy Fernandez, Nick Batum years, and mm -hmm. I probably did I don't know thirty episodes or something like that. But mm -hmm. it was cool, man. I even tried to interview Braun. He blew me off. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah. Nothing serious, man. It was all about having fun. I had Rudy teaching me Spanish. Yeah, um, that's awesome. I had my boy Patty Mills, you know, I had him, you know, talk to I, me about didgeridoos and yeah. I think I saw a clip of you and B Roy talking about yeah. something. Me and B Roy uh, breaking Man. down some stuff. Andre Miller and them. So I had a blast doing that. So it was road tripping, and then I'm sitting there, and that's what all my tags are on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. As if I have to tell your your followers, your viewers, they follow me. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm just what well, they would do 100%. now. Right, right. Uh, but anyway, I, I started, I, it used to be road tripping. So I was like, damn, dude, I'm at home. I got to do something. And uh, yeah, dude, I fired up this and just came up with the idea. And I, I was really doing a bunch, man, and getting them going. And I just kind of got burned out. I'm like thinking, God, is this ever going to end, you know, this whole being at home? And it's ironic. Right. My wife actually today texted me uh, that some coworkers of hers were asking if I was going to do another one. And so uh, I actually do it, man. Yeah, I you know what? These last couple of days, I was writing some stuff down, and I yeah. talked to my boy Jamal Crawford's gonna join. Uh huh. Nice. Uh, and uh, I got some other got some other guys that I think some people will find interesting. But mm -hmm. but on that, so yes, this you guys having me on is kind of relit the fire there under my ass. Nice. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah, I'm gonna try to steal some of your fans. Hey, that sounds we great. We can share them. How about that? <laughs> we'll share them. Uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a cooperative effort. Give yeah. everyone, give the fans what they want, man. Bring home tripping back. 
That's my what we fan, really yeah. need. My fans are very demanding. <laughs> yeah. I'm working just, on my brand, man. They just I can't keep up with these kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Was giving a voice to some of my boys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got you know at the end of this podcast, we don't mind like to throw a couple names out there for these guys. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. Let me 100%. just one hundred percent. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just want to just uh, just you know just supporting these small businesses right now. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, they need all the help they can get at the moment. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us do. You know. Um, yeah. But uh, before we start heading down that road. Uh, before we start selling out, I'm like, on Wayne, like on Wayne's World, <laughs> like on Wayne's World, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> All right. uh, make sure you edit that RJ, out, RJ. Ed, yeah, RJ, edit that out, please. We can't. We're gonna have to take off RJ, the swoosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blur Try it out. I'll up. blur it out. Try All right. Note to RJ. self: John can't come back on the show. Yeah. There we go. No, okay. I will. I am a man i will sell out <laughs> you guys you guys put your podcast on a hat i'll wear it <laughs> you got good. it man you yep, got it definitely we'll, we'll send so, you something we'll have you decked out for the next show yes i'll, <laughs> I'll take a picture with dame and i'll have him tweet that out yes oh uh, what's up that'd be so sweet that's going straight on the home page yeah yeah <laughs> so actually uh, yeah go ahead go ahead all right all right all right back to the show <laughs> let's yes, I uh apologize. i tend to wander some no 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 totally cool but but uh, I mentioned Dew's Grill, which I think is hands down the best chicken in Portland. I don't personally. Um, if I were a rook on a visiting team, and it was my first time in Portland, you wouldn't and I be was looking for somebody. I can see you wouldn't. You you don't look like you're in too good a shape, man. I don't. No, think I'm not, man. You and <laughs> I both are not playing ball, right? <laughs> like all three. You wouldn't of us. be getting too much playing time. <laughs> Hey, I don't care as long as I'm riding the pine. Get a front row seat, right? I'm cool with and that. And he is asking advice about food right now. So. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, ahead, man. Well, what would Throw I that recommend? shade what? at me. <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. Finish so, the question. So, I, so I, come, I come to you, John, and I say, hey, man, I've never been to this city before. Where do I go to get a good meal? And I ask you what your top three places are. If you just If you had to go, say... I don't know when these guys eat after the game, before the game. Right. Well, the guys are always going to these bougie places, man. So it's tough. Yeah, but if I if I want if I want a recommendation from a true blue Portlander, right? Where am I going? Well, we already said dues, and for those out there, man, it's some teriyaki chicken that's just off the hook, man. It's Gotta like, get it. It'll blow your mind. It's so good, oh, yeah. and it's so fresh. It's ridiculous, man. And Anthony's such a good ass dude. Man, I could go on about him. And you want to talk about a, a Blazer fan? Yeah. That cat, man, he knows his hoops like nobody before. I mean, he's mm -hmm. unbelievable. And he loves yeah. hip hop. So we had a great conversation on ours. But and uh, you know what's nice. crazy about Anthony? So I lived I lived over off of uh, Sandy Boulevard, like 24th and Sandy, for like I don't know seven, eight years. Yeah. And I wouldn't go there all the time. I mean, right. there there were a, a, a there was a period where it had been like at least a year, year and a half before I went in there. Mm -hmm. Again, but I I walk in there and I kid you not, this guy knew exactly who I was, oh, even yeah. though it's been all this time. Yeah, he knew my first name and what I ordered every single time for my wife and I. Yeah, I was and, like, it blew my mind. Yeah, he's unbelievable, and he, he and his parents. Uh, his story is great. We won't go on and on about Anthony. This is about, it's supposed to be about me. If you want to know his story, check out Home Tripping with Big John. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you like that plug? There you go. <laughs> so, hey, and I just I was just texting with him yesterday, man. So I'm gonna tell him to listen to this. He's gonna get mad that I didn't blow him up. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> that place is is so dope and doing so well. They opened another one like over in Beaverton for anybody that's out there. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, didn't I mean, if you're, I mean, if no, you're getting... no joke, man. I uh -huh. would just. I would just go to dues, man. It's cheap. It's bomb. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a mom and pop type place. Uh, there's yeah. a place on Alberta, uh, and it's not the bougie ones at all. This is down on like 27th, 28th. It's called La Serenada. Oh yeah. Mid '90s when Alberta started popping again and started, you know, started becoming what you're seeing now. They were mm -hmm. one of the first ones to move in, and everybody's like, "God, what are they crazy to put a restaurant down there?" But La Serenada yeah. for Mexican food is just off the hook, man. It's just authentic. Mm -hmm. Uh, my grandparents are from, my great grandparents are from Mexico, and so, you know, you you know when it's real and when it's not. And man, there's stuff they put together that's unreal. So I always pump pump that place up. And then on a, on a different note, 
I mean, there's a place over in Selwood called Reverend's Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just heard unreal. Yep. I mean, it's unreal, man. It is so good. That spot's uh, good. Yeah, it's got yeah. that down south vibe. Um, yep. And that place is that place is unreal. And then my boy in Dominican Sioux uh, has back a chicken restaurant here, Bays. Bays, yes. And so yeah. That place, that place is 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 unreal too. So you, he's a fellow. He's a fellow Grant General man. So anytime I can can pump up any of the neighborhood business. Not that that cat needs. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> but, but seriously <laughs> though, seriously though, I would say for me that's the second best chicken in Portland. Yeah. That place Dude, the, is bomb, man. Man, the fire on Bay's chicken, it's yeah. like your your mouth is just like dancing with flavor, dude. It's yeah. so good. And it came out like, what, like a year or two ago? It's relatively new. And it is like just blowing up the, the chicken scene it really for, for Portland. Yeah. My favorite chicken place in the whole country, though, or there's two of them. Yeah, uh, really? In Memphis, it's a place called Gus's Fried Chicken. Okay. And it's this little brick shack. And it literally has a metal screen door where the where the the netting is all blown in the wind. You walk in there and the lady says, "Sit down," and you just go sit down. You're like, "Okay, Lieutenant Dan, sit down." Shut exactly. up. And then and then if you ask for something, do you have any mac and cheese? Does it look like we have mac and cheese? You know, and she gets mad at you. I like that. And That's awesome. I, I, not it comes with whatever you ordered. It's just chicken, chicken or chicken, white bread, a piece of white bread. Yeah. And then it's got damn. You can get forties. There's a whole wall of forties on the what? wall. That's the only way you can get beer. So I was like, yeah, I'll take a two piece. I'll get some mac and cheese, and then I guess bring me uh, and, uh, some old e. Give me. I was gonna say, and, uh, <laughs> give me two of those old e's. <laughs> me and my boy, me and my boy Antonio Harvey, man. That was our spot. And we would oh, go there man. and just sit. Back. That place is unbelievable. And then yeah. the place on Canal Street in New Orleans. Um, uh, Willie's fried chicken, something like that. And it's got the sign outside that says, chicken so good, you'll slap your mama. And so that's all, <laughs> that's Dang, all I, I needed I to hope get you. I you don't take your mama you on these trips. Know. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I needed. Man, so. Yeah. I, mean, I know like, that wasn't, I know that wasn't Portland, but if any of your, uh, any of yeah. your, uh, traveling, uh, fan base, yeah. you got to hit up Gus's in Memphis, man. That's no joke. Man, yeah. like just for people who are fans of like Southern food in general, if you go to a spot, and the people behind the counter are yelling at you like your family. Right. You at the right spot. You one hundred percent. You're at the right spot. You know it's good food. If you come um, to a restaurant, and you feel like you've done something bad. Yeah. That's just that's good. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a key to sit down at a table. <laughs> it, feels like, it feels like you're at home with your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, John. I want to know, can you tell us like one of your favorite interactions with like players, coaches, whoever, while working with the Blazers? Jeez, man. So yeah, many to choose from, I'm sure. I know you got to dig yeah, through the memory there bank is, here. There is, and it just depends on the experience. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got younger listeners out there. I don't want to tell you one of them, but <laughs> it was a crazy night with Ruben Patterson in Oklahoma City. I'll just put that out there. Okay. Uh, but no, man, Um, you know, I think I think these guys get a lot of, you know, some deserving, but a bad rap. Professional athletes in general, I mean, because all yeah, we hear yeah. is the bad stuff, right? Right. So when you get a, so when you get a guy like Dame, who I haven't really talked about, but is literally as as good of a dude off the court as he is on, is and all mm-hmm. the stuff on the court, man. Whatever. He is just mm-hmm. such a cool ass, down to earth guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, dude, grab my phone. And, and shoot a video wishing my daughter happy birthday and oh, then handing awesome. it to, and then that's handing nice. it to, yeah and then grabbing my phone with cj and and talking to my um my daughter's science class you know because my daughter asked him to come to class on on bring your dad to work day she goes dad will you see if dame <laughs> you want to forget you dad will you bring dame right and they're like no nah, but here give us your phone and, you know and then and, and so when my daughter fifth grade uh, the powerpoint yeah. and at the end of it is that video wishing her fifth grade mr sisk who's the biggest basketball fan in the world oh them wow. saying hello to him i mean i, I knew she's gonna get an a the rest of the season <laughs> oh yeah for sure <laughs> just little stuff like that man marcus Camby, um mm-hmm. who travels everywhere you know he he took time to talk to my kids when they were younger that they'll never forget mm-hmm. i mean um jamal crawford um unbelievably nice dude like, that's probably the nicest guy i've ever met yeah i've heard ever. that 
and just there really hasn't been too many guys are really I had some great experiences of going to dinner with some of the guys sometimes or the movies uh mm-hmm. being in a restaurant and then trying to pay and they go no 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 that table over there has it you know and zebo says what's up or uh you know being in dallas and 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 west matthews picking up the tab things like that mm-hmm. but but just i don't know we don't spend a we don't spend time with the guys you know when we're on the road mm-hmm. right we do our own things but just interaction wise uh the guys are great myers leonard's a great guy mm-hmm. uh, always cool my son broke his leg the first game of his uh senior season in football two years oh, ago no. and Myers saw that I, I i threw it on he was a starting running back i threw it on instagram and he mm-hmm. hollered at me and said dude i want to send him a message you know mm-hmm. just you know just things like that um and maybe i get some of that treatment because i'm around so i'm almost mm-hmm. like part you know of the crew if you want to mm-hmm. say that uh but just in general you know pulling in you know we've had so many guys where we just pull in uh, to a city at 2 30 in the morning they're signing autographs till everybody's gone i mean it's just it's a really cool vibe on that point one of the funniest things that ever happened uh end of a road trip in orlando years ago we're getting off the bus two in the morning everybody's like oh b-roy blah 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 blah. lamarcus lamarcus come sign this and i'm standing there and it wasn't <laughs> it was channing fry so channing fry is like should I? I was like, hell yeah, go to it. So he goes over and starts <laughs> signing Lamarcus's Silver, name. Silver Sharpie doing Channing Fry on balls, <laughs> prints, magazines, jerseys. Oh my god! And he's looking at me, laughing the whole time. And then Lamarcus walks out behind. Him. <laughs> That's amazing. That was hilarious. That's that awesome. Was hilarious. And then, and then, and then seeing Chappelle in the um, elevator in San Francisco. I mentioned that earlier. Two yeah. times. Not once, two times, about a year and a half apart. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. He just, he walked in the elevator, we're all sitting there, and I'm like, oh, and Lamarcus, and I'm like, oh, and he goes, and he's just sitting there smoking a cigarette in the Four Seasons. <laughs> he goes, he looks, he goes, who are these motherfuckers, man? And he, <laughs> everybody's laughing, and they start taking pictures with them. And, That's tight. You know, I, I met Muhammad Ali in Phoenix. Um, oh, wow. That's ex, a big ex one. Team wow. president Larry Miller had him come to the hotel to meet the guys Dang. and i was down in the lobby yeah. and i was just like and then you know he said yeah they said yeah come on over i mean that was pre-iphone so i got no proof of it but man nothing but a memory um but no, sometimes that's, that's all you need that, that's that's probably been the coolest thing is just seeing some really cool random ass people because we stay in these nice ass hotels mm-hmm. right so sit, next, sit next to jada pinkett smith in our hotel yeah. lobby or having warren sap you know guys like that come up and uh, it's it, it's been really cool meeting some cool people and there's no way I would have oh Kevin Bacon oh yeah that's I mentioned right that to, I mentioned that to Tim the whole six degrees of Kevin Bacon <laughs> you guys are now two degrees from oh, Kevin what's Bacon. up yeah I'm so honored I'm, yeah, yeah I'm gonna use that the next <laughs> yep. time I play <laughs> yeah we were in Boston we were in Boston in the gym and I don't go to the gym that yeah. much if you can you can tell but uh, uh, I was on there all the guys were in there training and they all left and then someone came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said hey who are all those guys uh, I says the Blazers were playing the Celtics he goes right on man and then he introduced himself hey I'm Kevin I said hey I'm John and then we walked away I was like oh <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing I did was I was like I'm one degree <laughs> that changes, yeah. that changes Wait, you, the game you didn't, you didn't look up when he introduced himself Bro, not even no, man. I got fans all over the place coming. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for the people. Uh, I don't have no, time to look at people in the face. <laughs> right. So one degree of Kevin, man. I was like, well, I know Shoot. Dame real well, and I know Kevin Bacon, so I'm, I'm covered, man. You're set, man. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder if Kevin Bacon's somewhere doing a podcast right now, talking about meeting me. Well, he's probably <laughs> listening to the show. He's probably watching. <laughs> yeah, he's on, he's on his way to dues right now to get that number two. <laughs> oh, what's up? <laughs> uh, if so, we're doing our jobs correctly. So, if you had to pick one blazer, because we all want to know, right? Like from an insider's perspective, we all want to know who. Who's the coolest blazer, right? Like, who's who's your favorite blazer that you've ever met while working for the Blazers? Actually, it doesn't have to be while working for the Blazers. Just in general, like, like if there was one guy that you were like, yeah, that's 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 my dude right there. I mean, I mentioned a couple of men. Jamal Crawford mm-hmm. was fantastic. Camby, mm-hmm. 
it, it's it's ironic that arguably the best trailblazer ever is also the coolest one I've ever dealt with, Dan. Yeah. Uh, just unreal. I mean, I, I, I said it a couple minutes ago. Unreal. You guys, mm-hmm. if, if someone would could find a reason to hate him, I, I would love to hear what it is. Because that dude is just professional and chill, and he's a huge boxing fan. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I worked yeah. for HBO Boxing, man, he was freaking out. Oh, that's I mean, cool. he had someone to, he had someone to talk to about movies and boxing you know because i don't talk to the guys about basketball mm-hmm. uh no so we chat all the time about boxing and yeah i'll be I, I was doing a fight in vegas and he's like man we're almost there did they start yet you know he's like you know text <laughs> i was like what do you want me to do hold the fight for you, Dane? they don't yeah. care who you are <laughs> uh, but no man I, I, I it'd be tough for me to find enough guys to count on one hand that weren't cool uh, I mean, Dame's going to go down as one of the coolest guys ever. Greg yeah. Oden was fantastic. We were just talking about G the other day. Mm-hmm. That dude got such a bad rap on everything that went I down. Know. That, that dude, poor guy. That, that dude was Awful. cool as hell, man. Just yeah. an absolute gentle giant, man. He was great. Mm, uh, yeah, I actually met him at a signing once, and dude, nice. he was he was so personable, man. One of the, one of the better interactions I've had, actually. Oh yeah, he's great. One of my favorite pictures ever with the player is with him. We're in, oh yeah. Uh, we're on the team plane and Mr. Allen, we had a couple different planes and one of them, uh, we were in Mr. Allen's bedroom and there was a big desk and a bed in there. And Greg would sit at that desk so he could put his leg up. And uh, I said, Greg, I need a picture for of you and, and me for my kid. I lied and said it was my kid. I was being a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so he's all like this and I'm all like this. And it looks like, you know, like a, like, like a Will Smith, like a DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince album cover. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. No, Greg was fantastic. And like I said, man, it's tough to find. You know, Nick Batum was the coolest, smoothest cat. I mean, that guy was so nice, man, and so down to yeah. earth. Uh, my, it's my wife's favorite player, actually. Oh, right on. I, I was yeah. real cool with Joe Prisbilla and Steve Blake. Those guys were fantastic. Oh, well. Prisbilla, man. Prisbilla. That, one of my favorite players of all time. Absolutely. Yeah, he, had a couple like, he, nights. he wasn't flashy, but, dude, he did everything, like all the dirty work, man. That guy, man, had a good sense of humor, too, man. He came off as shy, but he was funny. And Chris yeah. Kamen was probably the craziest player we've ever had. Really? That dude was a nut job, man, in a good way. <laughs> I mean, he was an absolute nut job, but in a good way. He was That guy is smart as hell. Yeah. Uh, he, he was with us towards the end of his career. He knew exactly to the dime how much money he'd made. He knew oh, how wow. much money he'd given to family. He goes, he goes, I made a mistake and gave too much money to my family that first year. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play this many you know, years to make it back. And this, and I mean, the guy, he'd pull oh. rookies aside and try to teach them about stocks and yeah, oh, and that's great man. investments and stuff. Oh dude, he was, he was great. He was a lot of, he was a lot of fun to be around. And then he yelled at me once he walked on the plane and I sat next to Mike Rice uh, for, you know, 15 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would have hors d'oeuvres out and Mike Rice is eating all this shrimp and I got some snacks going on and he walked by and just stopped and gave me and rice like the dirtiest looks and he goes this food isn't for you like he started yelling (laughs) and rice got all nervous and froze eating a shrimp (laughs) and and he goes this is for us he says we're the ones out here working and and busting he was like giving us a hard time and everybody's kind of looking waiting to see if he's serious or not and i said yeah hold on a sec you and i got the same number of rebounds tonight I deserve this quesadilla, homie. <laughs> and he just looked at, he looked at me and started cracking up. And from that point on, we were cool. Yeah. I called, oh, him, on, cool, I called him on his man, and we were cool. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you've lived through a lot of eras of Blazer basketball. What would you say is your favorite era? If I'm going to guess, it's going to be the Joe Blazer era. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I was such a Rasheed Wallace fan. I mean, just that. God, there were just some bad dudes on that. But <laughs> I'm just a fan. They were so much of, fun. I'm a fan of just getting up in people's face and letting them know. I mean, obviously, yeah. you can tell them, I talk a lot of smack. Just the fact that those guys brought it, man. And then when, and then once we added Damon Stoudemire and then Ryder and then just, you know, then it became Steve Smith. But it was just like, just the... Mm-hmm. And you had guys like Zebo coming up young and Bonzi, and it's just mm. oh, here, here. <laughs> Dang, oh, nice. nice, right? It's the Rasheed Wallace Air <laughs> Force buttons, yep. man. That's yep. awesome. I, 
I just there's just something about it, you yeah. know. Yeah. And anytime it comes up and stuff, my boss yeah. gives me a hard time. My boss has been working there for 20, 30 years or something. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can't like them. You know, the jailblazers <laughs> can't be your favorite. But man, I mean, Brian Grant and those guys, I mean, they weren't getting in trouble, but just. Yeah, yeah. Me, me, hey, you, to answer your question earlier, Brian Grant, I got to know, but that was before I worked for the team. I knew through mm -hmm. some, some different situations and that's a really fantastic guy. And it's tough to mm -hmm. see what he's going through. But yeah, my era was that. I mean, I grew up, you know, my parents grew up watching. I remember being really little and hearing those 70s games mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then going to the Coliseum in the 80s to watch Clyde and TP and Jerome and those guys. Oh, yeah. So, See, that's, just, I mean, I mean that all right the areas, there. Yeah, all the that, areas are unbelievable. Probably that's, my favorite. That's the era when I became a fan. Yeah. I would say my favorite team, though, is starting at center, Ha Soon Jin. Yeah. Victor Kirapa, Sergey yeah. Monia. Sebastian <laughs> Kelfair and who the hell knows. That was one of my first road trips. That was like our starting line. That was the first time I ever oh, went to man. New York City playing the Knicks. Was, was it was it preseason? No. No. What? That was our that was Why our don't I remember that? Season. That was our twenty one win season. Um, oh my god. I do That's not why remember that. Those guys are why we were able to get B Roy in the market. Yeah. Team. It's probably like Von Wafer or something was the other guard. Hey, and it's funny you say Von Wafer. That's one of the few dudes in the league that was actually a jerk to me. Was Von Wafer. Really? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. He joined us. He like looked at me. I, I walked on the plane and he's like, who, you know, he'd only been there for a week and he sees mm -hmm. me. And, you know, yeah. I, I'm not anybody, you know, but mm -hmm. most of the guys know me. And, and he's like, and then looks down on my shoes and he goes, those shoes are whack, dude. And walked away. Like what? he judged oh, me. I'm like, yeah, I know. I couldn't what? believe. It. Yeah. Uh, and so one I always, thing you don't do is right, diss uh, John's yeah. kicks. So guess who didn't have? <laughs> guess who didn't have any replays or highlight packages? <laughs> I was just about to say that. I'm like, I'm sure you got them back with the highlight packages, though. Yep. <laughs> ESPN saw no Von Way for highlights. <laughs> You're like, this man got dunked on here. This man right. got dunked yep. on here. <laughs> I just showed him all with the air ball. <laughs> Now he's up at dues. Now he's up at dues cleaning the grill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John, it was great to interview you. Like, just to ask you all these questions, to hear all these stories. Um, we're actually wanting to do like our busted bucket thing and talk about the current Blazers now and just NBA talk. We're wondering if you're down to just sit, talk, get it's integrated, Blazers. man. Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's do this. So. The Blazers just beat Sacramento, and now we are currently sitting fifth in the West. How do you guys think the Blazers has have done, like, for the first half of the season? John, I'm going to kick it to you first, my friend. How do you think we've done? I think, I mean, are you kidding me? With all the stuff that we've gone through, to be where we are, what's our record right now? Uh, 21 and 14. Get out of here. What's that, like 60%, 600 I mean, they're, I'm not a math guy, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, look at teams, you look at teams yeah. like you look at teams like Boston and Miami and Dallas and Denver and all these teams that were supposed to be the teams on the rise. Right. Mm -hmm. But man, mm -hmm. Boston's been healthy all season. I mean, I know there's been a couple of COVID things, but dude, not like us, not losing, right. not basically having three starters out the whole, you know, almost. I mean, is the, is there another team out there that's been dealing with with this? amount of injuries like like and not just the amount but the significant injuries the key and the to key positions yeah that's what i'm saying man everybody you always hear all these people hating on coach stocks you know mm -hmm. you may not like the way he does this or you don't like the way he did he's doing something right you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and you could say oh well he i've heard people oh he's got dame to bail him out blah 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 i'm not big on that <laughs> i mean I it, I, i'll say that's not untrue but at the same time like he's obviously doing something right to put dame in the right position to make yeah to make the and plays he, he does you know to, to jump in here i think that people were criticizing stats at the beginning because they were wanting more from this new revamp roster. I mean, at the beginning of the season, Charles Barkley had said, hey, I'm putting millions of dollars on that team to take it all the way, to get the championship. <laughs> and then they were sort of lackluster at the beginning of the season. But what people don't understand is you got to slow your roll a little bit. You got to have time for people to gel. You got to figure out the defense. They implemented a new defense. And now, 
I mean, we're fifth in the West? Are you joking me without Nurkic, without Collins, without CJ? That is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm I'm very proud of our Blazers. I think I think they're doing fantastic. I'm biased, of course. I'm always biased. But I'll call it like I see it. And I, I I'm pumped, man. I think it's fantastic. And on, on on in a weird way, a lot of these guys now who wouldn't have gotten, you know, some chances. You know, GT now is has stepped up and Gary's a dog, man. And yeah, the fact that he he's doing what a lot of people can't, and he's doing he's stepping up when it counts and he's handling his business, helping Dame out. And how about a guy that Enos Canner? I oh, mean, dude, I mean, dude, what do we give up for him? The star right, was <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, man, like yesterday's recycling. And and then this dude is doing what he's doing 11 and 11 12 and 12 i mean the dude is just a beast out there yeah i mean he's can't a double jump, double machine can't jump like that like, <laughs> <laughs> like you could even slide a piece of paper under my boy <laughs> but it's all about positioning it's all about up here and i think that's yeah. what a lot of people forget man mm-hmm. talent usually does win out i'll give you that you know most mm-hmm. of the time it does and in a seven game series it's it's most likely going to but night in and night out when it's a one game situation and it's about chemistry it's about gelling like like you said and it's about it's just not always about the x's and o's and if you mm-hmm. got it if you got a bunch of guys that believe in that which we seem to uh you can't hate on what they've done man it's just it's fantastic yeah yeah it's it, it's pretty incredible what they've done uh throughout the season i mean Cantor, last game against sacramento he Dude, had 22 yeah. points and 15 rebounds yeah. man Two. or excuse me 21 rebounds 21 rebounds. points 20 yeah. rebounds Name me another backup center that does that. No. Absolutely. And, like, I, I think I've said this, like, three times before, but Cantor isn't necessarily the most impressive basketball specimen that's ever stepped on the court. He's not going to get you deep into the playoffs, but what he is going to do for you is he's going to get you to the playoffs. Like, during the regular season, you need someone that's just going to grind it out, get you rebounds, get you some points here and there, and just bring that, like, nasty energy um, that's Enos Cantor, man. And I think Neil Olshay did a great job not giving up too much for him. We got him on the cheap. Like you said, yesterday's recycling. That's what we gave up for the man. <laughs> it, might even, it might even have been the day before his recycling, man. <laughs> but, and he's got that mid-90s game, man. That banging yes, down does. low. Yeah. And, and he's he's a beast. I mean, he's got he's some an nice old school center, old school sure. moves too, man. I love him. But yeah, man, I'm happy with him. They're, they're doing great. Yeah. What do you guys think are the Blazers title chances this year so we could start off with maybe the West so the standings the standings right now it goes Jazz Suns Lakers Clippers Blazers then Nuggets Spurs Mavericks I won't include the last two they have to play in which are the Warriors and Grizzlies um so just with that the Western Conference at least what do you think Mm -hmm. the Blazers chances are I mean, go ahead, John. Seven game series are are a lot different than like I was just saying. It's tough, man. Stuff slows down. Defense becomes so much more important. Um, That's a tough one. I I mean, it's impossible to say. I mean, beginning of the year, I was a little hyped because we had a lot of depth. But who knows, man? We're clicking this last. You know, we have these streaks where we're playing great. We have these streaks where we're playing not so great. But if you got to think, you know, if CJ and Nurt can come back and then we've got some weapons coming off the bench, there's always a shot. But it's all about matchups, man. It depends on who we play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it also comes down to timing, man. Like what, what you, you just said, they're starting, the team's starting to click. And that's, and that's without two key guys mm-hmm. on the roster right now. And, and you know, when, when CJ comes back, when Nurt comes back, we know what we can get from them. I think the question is going to be how are they going to gel um, with everyone else, right? Because they've been sitting for basically the first half of the season. So I think it's about timing. And if they can time it right to where they all figure out how to play with each other going into the playoffs, I think we, we do have a really good chance. I mean, it's still going to be tough taking down the reigning champs, but I mean, I think there's a chance. I mean, anybody can win on any given night, right? Yeah, absolutely. I I also think that we have a pretty good chance. And the reason being is what you guys said. I'm going to echo it, which is we're missing key players. And if there's anything that I've learned during this great stretch of like 10 games, I want to say, is that 
we are absolutely deep on offensive firepower. Like on any given day, we could have six players go off for 10 for 10 points each. And if we have Dame Lillard, any game can be our game with Dame Lillard. Hey that man, if it's, if it's within 10 points yeah, and Dame's on the court, we got a chance. I mean, that Warriors game, we, we were... I mean, Dame Lillard was like two for 10, two for 11 the whole game. And then the fourth quarter comes and he hits a clutch shot and just bla- like bails us out. And he's done mm-hmm. it time and time again. And I'm just excited for him um, because he's, fi- he's finally getting some national love, some national spotlight. It might not be in the right way because like Stephen A. Smith will say he should be in a bigger market. I mean, does anyone actually care what Stephen A. Smith, or what, what he says, or, or like uh, uh, Skip Bayless? Like, I don't who, who actually watches those fools anymore? That's what I want to know. Probably Von Wafer. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for his highlight reel, John. Who is, who is the busted buckets, Damian Lillard? Who's bringing that heat? Is, that your, is it RJ? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say RJ is our John LaCrofka. So we're, nah, dude, oh, you can't yeah. put un- un- <laughs> unrealistic expectations on that kid. RJ, I can't see you, dog, but don't, don't even try to live up to this. This is a whole other level, man. I mean, I got Emmy Awards. I got Emmy Awards over here. I got... Hey, that's what's up. You can't even... I got... Yeah, but right. that's that's for boxing, isn't it? Uh, No, both... Oh, no, 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 that's right. That was the Blazers, though. Wasn't it with... with... Oh, here it comes. There you go. This is what I wanted. Here we go. <laughs> Dude, does he have a rose garden chair? Oh, yeah, yeah. he does. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got an Emmy for each hand, homie. Nice. Beautiful. Dang. That it's is some, what's up. It's something to aspire, John. aspire to, RJ. Yeah, yeah. John, are, oh. are any of these... Jay Dalla is what we're going to call you, huh? Are any of these for podcasting, though? What's that, brother? Are any of those for podcasting? Oh, no, I haven't submitted my... So, RJ, you have a chance. So, RJ, you got a chance, brother. (laughs) You can do this, man. All right, you know what's messed up, RJ? This is the episode that's going to win it, so you got to (laughs) win me. We'll be sending you one, too, John. We'll be sending one, Right, (laughs) right. right. We're just Uh, just going to send John up. I've been a part of a couple for HBO as well, but... Uh, the Blazers are unbelievable. My boss, uh, <clears throat> they, if you win one of these, you still got to buy the trophy. They don't give the trophies out. Oh, you're kidding. No, nah, they're expensive as hell. Um, but my boss, uh, has gotten them for us, which is unreal, man. It's oh, that's like, cool. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So he got them for us and showed up in a big old gold box. And I'm like, well, if, uh, if I, <laughs> last year <laughs> I couldn't work forever. I was about to melt those things down and sell them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at your shoes and you're like, no. Nah, it's like, me. <laughs> look, look <at> those. <laughs> It'd be my kids and these trophies. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I was mentioning Dame Lillard earlier. He's been in MVP talks. I want to know, John, who do you think is the most deserving for MVP this year? Make your case. That's always, that's always a, cr- a crazy, crazy race because what does valuable mean? I mean, right. it, it, to different people. How uh, I'll be honest, the most valuable player in the league the last fifteen years has been LeBron James. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't care who's won the championship. He, he's the most dominating and most valuable player. He's unreal, and that's coming from that's coming from a Blazer fan. How or. or Maybe not 15, because Kobe should have had a bunch of those, too. How does Kobe only have what he has? How does, you know, how does LeBron not have 10? Yeah. Right. So it just depends on what you what you consider it. Is a guy who's on a team decimated with injuries but is still bringing it, is he more valuable? Does Dame deserve it? Doncic's yeah. numbers are ridiculous. I mean, unbelievable Doncic's numbers. And that kid, I didn't. he didn't need to apologize for being a starter. You see his numbers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but right, Dallas isn't. Right. But Dallas is healthy and not winning. So what do you do? Is a guy with is yeah. Kawhi Leonard whose numbers aren't as astronomical, but he does it on both ends. Is he the most valuable? Joel Embiid's killing it again. 
Oh, MVP. Uh, the MVP. Phenomenal. I, n- I never touch the MVP, man. I mean, I know I'm a guest on the show. I'm supposed to answer, but it's just, <laughs> it just, it almost depends on who you're a fan of because yeah, like, right. there's blazer, there's blazer dorks who don't think, you know, the pinwheel, the pinwheel passion blinds the common sense. I always say it's true. Dame this, Dame that. Sure. If Dame wins it, I'm all for it, man. But it's like, how, how, how is Doncic better than him? How is LeBron better than Paul George? How is, I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. I guess I didn't answer your question, man. Um, yeah, but who's yours? Who's your MVP? If you had, if you had to grab a guy and it doesn't have to yeah. be Dame, it could be LeBron. Yeah. I'm a, this is tough, man. I'm going to say Myers Leonard. That's a cop out. <laughs> That's a cop out if I ever heard Myers, one. Myers, if you're watching, homie. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Myers? Right? Actually, Tim has a great Myers story, man. What's actually? That? Uh, yeah, man. When when uh, I mean, it's 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 nothing crazy. It's just uh, when my um, when my daughter was born, my first kid. Um, I was super hyped. The Blazers were on. They were in the playoffs, and uh, I I just posted. I was like, hey. Uh, welcome to the world. Uh, you know, I added the Trailblazers, whatever, and and uh, I said, I said, you know, here's welcome uh, your newest fan. And uh, Myers Leonard was the only person to reply and say congratulations. And he's done that a couple times actually. And it, it, so to echo what you had said earlier, Myers Leonard is a super cool dude. Oh yeah, that guy's great, man. Mm-hmm. So it's not surprising that you would name him MVP. Right, right. Easily, easily, <laughs> easily in the top five. I'm surprised LeBron didn't didn't draft him last night. <laughs> Tim, who are you going for? Who's your MVP this year? Well, you know, it's it's a it was a it's a tough decision for me. Um, but you know, I got those pinwheel goggles on. <laughs> it's Dane. Oh yeah, I, I got to give it to Dane. I know we're gonna that. be using that moniker, by the way. That that phrasing. The pinwheel oh, yeah. goggles, for you sure. You didn't trademark that yet, right? <laughs> you better do it, man. Channing Fry will steal it. <laughs> With that being said, we are going to go to our next segment, and that, of course, is called Giving Props. Come prop up on Thrive Fantasy this season. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports app for player props. They've eliminated the need to do countless hours of research because they only ask you about the top tier athletes in their respective sports. For example, Wednesday's DFS featured James Harden's assist total at 6.5 assists. If you picked the over, it was worth 85 points. If you picked the under, it was 115 points. Thrive Fantasy also had Bradley Beal's point total at 28.5 points. If you picked the over, it was 95. Under, it was 105. It's a fun and easy way to get into fantasy. Use promo code BUSTED when you sign up today, and you'll receive an instant deposit match up to $50 on your first deposit of $20 or more. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store, or by visiting their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. Indeed, prop up today, and John, I'm going to introduce this game. It's called Giving Props. You're going to say you give it props or you don't give it props, and I'm going to start with our definition, and the definition is giving applause kudos to a certain situation person or story so john tim i want to know if you give this props percy miller aka master p has been rumored to be in talks with reebok as a potential buyer of the company master p has been on record saying that he believes that alan iverson can be the michael jordan of reebok so john i want to know do you give Master P props for saying that Allen Iver- Allen Iverson can be the Michael Jordan of Reebok? I love Allen Iverson, but I'm gonna say, uh, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it ain't happening, man. Not anymore. These kids today don't know who Allen Iverson is. Um, I'm with that. They I mean, know jo- they know Jordan. That's a whole different thing, though, man. Allen Here's Iverson- my thing, man. If yeah. he was going to be the Michael Jordan of Reebok, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he have already been the Michael Jordan of Reebok? I mean, he had yeah. his day, True. right? He right. could have. There's a reason. There's a reason that Adidas is trying to get out from under that man. Um, it's just, it's that's a tough business, man. And you know, I'm damn. I, I don't know numbers, but it doesn't seem like. When when do you guys see anybody wearing Steph Curry shoes? <laughs> I mean, I and mean, this is like one of the most. Whenever yeah, we have know, JJ on the show. 
that, is that someone of you guys? Is that one of your boys? Yeah, that that's one of our uh, regular guest spots who also helps with content creation for the Busted Bucket Pod, who's also a, a Warriors fan. Oh, well, he, he actually creates the music for our show too, <laughs> and guys, does the music you guys for our hang show. Out with, and you guys hang out with him? Hey, not I, a, sir. Not that's I. My, that's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> well, no disrespect, bro, but your boy's got a broke <laughs> shoe game. <laughs> <laughs> a broke ass shoe game. I wouldn't even put my curries way in the far bottom left. Right. <laughs> Uh, no, dude, on a serious tip, that, that, that's tough, man. That's tough getting a brand going again. I've been really impressed uh, the amount of work that New Balance and Puma have put in recently. Mm-hmm. But right. I, I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I'm no expert. I follow some stuff, but you rarely see anybody in New Balances and Pumas. Uh, yeah. They can't be, you know, Nike's not worried about them and never will be, neither no. will Adidas. But I think that's why Adidas is probably trying to get out of that, man. They're just like, ah, mm-hmm. we tried, we thought about it. When I, you did know, just see, I did just see that they're putting out the old D Brown pumps. Uh, I just saw that yesterday on Twitter. So it seems like that. they're trying to do. I think that's their move. Yes. They don't need to. They don't need to keep creating new stuff. Now with these kids and uh, with, with all these resellers and things like that, I mean, bring back the AI ones. Bring back, you know, yeah, right. what was, questions. Those the some questions, people think yeah. those are the best best shoes ever bring back the old school stuff if you're going to do something i don't know if they want to jump into that game of trying to compete and to say that he's going to be the air jordan i mean that's come on and i love <laughs> that and, and i love alan iverson but the shoe game yeah, i do too yeah. right actually i'm, I'm gonna have a follow-up question here who has the best signature shoe right now oh shoot. like right now right now right now right now like the latest one out right now I'll be fair and say probably the next or the last five years. Oh, okay. I'm a huge Kobe fan. All of the all of the Kobe's have been just super dope. Yeah. That's, that's had- actually all Row used to ball in were Kobe's. Yeah, Kobe's. Yeah. Comfortable uh, shoe balling. I got the hookup from Alan Crabb. Yeah. Uh, don't tell anybody, but when he switched from Nike to Adidas, uh-huh. his, I'm going to whisper it. He said, don't tell anybody. <laughs> he's, he's, went, he's on the podcast saying uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When, hold on. Went, when he switched from Adidas to Nike, or from Nike to Adidas, uh-huh, uh-huh. He, gave me, he gave me like 10 pairs of Kobe's. <laughs> That's oh, dang. Yeah. I mean, and they're <laughs> yeah. all, they were, they were all, you know, his player you know, additions and just yeah. oh, that's yeah. dope. they were his PEs never worn because uh, he knew how much you, I like. We, we had the same shoe size, so it was perfect. I was about okay. to ask that. Yeah, I love Kobe. So what you're saying is Alan I or uh, Alan Crab has small feet. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Big never, John doesn't right? have big feet? <laughs> Come got, on, man! I got 13s. I'm bringing it. <laughs> uh, but no, man. Um. Uh, I always try to be cool with all the point guards so I can get so because I usually have the same size feet as those guys like Dame and I are the same size and so and there's yeah, a lot of cool yeah. guys in the, like Earl Watson and I had the same size he gave me some dope black history month uh, Nike. Oh, that's awesome. oh nice yeah nice, um, nice, nice. But, I mean, Kobe's Kobe's are amazing I'm more of a Nike guy but I can yeah. say uh Dame's Dame stuff is fire uh super Harden comfortable had, Harden had a couple good ones like the ones and twos mm-hmm. um uh, some of Kyrie's are a little too weird for me. I'm not big on the straps, so like the big Paul George straps and things like that. I've got a couple pair, but I'm not, I'm not big fans on them. And I don't hoop anymore, so it's not like I know what's giving you support and all that. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm a baller. I'm just not balling. Yeah, I yeah. I think, it. I think like one with straps that I like in particular um, are the Russell Wes- Westbrook's actually. The, the Jordan Why Nots, like those are pretty tight. Um, yeah. Anyway, so with this whole. Master P, Allen Iverson, being Michael Jordan thing for Reebok. <laughs> no props. No props from both across the board. Tim and Big John. We're going to go to our next topic, and that is Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony are investing in a professional basketball league for high schoolers that will pay them 100 k I want to know, Tim, do you give KD and Carmelo props for starting this league? Uh, yeah, I do, because I think anything that helps young kids uh, better themselves, you know, it, I, if they have, I, I, I guess, since I haven't really researched into this, I'm going to say as long as the, it also comes with some sort of financial advisor, because 
I mean, knowing you and myself as high schoolers, like we would have blown through that money like you wouldn't believe, man. Absolutely. We'd get it one day and it'd be gone that afternoon. <laughs> yeah, we would have spent it all on just buying Dew's shoes. Grill for everybody. <laughs> Dew's Grill and shoes. <laughs> yeah, for real. So Dew's yeah, is I, getting I think, a heavy promotion this month, this episode. <laughs> I think I think that's super cool that they're doing that. To I guess my question would be like, what's the payoff? Like, what's what's the end game for that? Because you know the NBA already has a G League, right? And I don't know, John. Do you know if you can go into the G League straight out of high school? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you can. Um, you can go, and in fact, didn't they just do something this last year, where some of the seniors in high school were able to go in there instead of college? And I thought yeah. they were compensating them. Oh, okay. And then yeah. I thought that this was all going to go, and mm-hmm. then uh, with the COVID thing, I think it messed everything up. I'm not sure exactly, but I thought they were in the works of doing something like this already. Yeah, I think you're you're right, John. Uh, I think the thing that kind of brought it up um, was kind of like around the time, um, what's his name, Lamelo, Lamelo went overseas is because he didn't have the mm. opportunity to go to the G League and get paid there. So it's like, mm-hmm. I'm going to take, I'm going to go overseas and get paid over there. I'm going to take my talents overseas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Big John, do you give this props? Uh, I'd say 20 years ago, I would have. Um, now with, with my kids, uh, I got a different spin on it. I got a different vibe on it. Oh, uh, mm. okay. Okay. It's cool that they're offering to give them this cash. I'm sure every player is not going to get a hundred grand. I mean, it's, maybe the star kids are or something like that. But even if they do, it, and like you said, there really needs to make sure that there's financial, you know. I mean, because if you think about it, there's a lot of parents who'd be like, hell yeah, go do that. And that's mm-hmm. scary. Yeah, that, yeah that's that, true. That money is not, I mean, I've seen <laughs> it with NBA players, man. That stuff goes fast. So mm-hmm. I, it, what worries me is, is that they lose their college eligibility immediately the minute that this happens and so dude busts his knee there's a, he's got that cash but you know but that's not that much well right, and like you right. said like you said there's a lot of you know hands reaching out when that money does start coming in mm-hmm. so that's a tricky one and they'd really have to make sure that they were tied in with financial advisors and all that and even with that man i i i'm down on this one just because they will lose their their eligibility in college there's no other options for them Sure, so what, they're gonna have a lot of money there for a couple years, but mm-hmm. if it's not handled right, that can become a mess. I mean, I think it yeah, could probably that, that work sense. for some. It could probably work for some, but I think that. Oh yeah. I think you're right. Like the vast majority, it's not gonna work out for them. In you the know, in term. conclusion, I think we're all kind of lukewarm on this idea. We'll see how it pans out. We'll see like where the money actually goes to, what kind of financial advice that these kids get. So maybe like halfway props from all three of us. Our next topic, Big John, you're a boxing fan. There's this trend going on called the Body Shot Challenge. I don't know if you know of this, but Juju (laughs) Smith-Schuster took part in it, and the challenge is getting punched in the gut by WBC lightweight champion Ryan Garcia. RJ, our video producer. I don't know if you can see this, Big John, but he's going to play a video right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hell no. Here is... (laughs) Juju Smith-Schuster just taking body shots over and over and over again. Look at his knees buckling, though. He's not even punching him back. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) And then he drops to the floor. Big John, I'm going to ask you, do you give this body shot challenge props and and Juju props? Well, the dude taking the punches is is a moron. For not punching back. <laughs> and to be totally honest, when you guys sent me this question and we were talking about body shots, I had some great stories about spring break when I was in the army. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even got some video back here I was going to give to RJ to have you RJ, play don't play that video. RJ, don't play <laughs> that video. Don't, don't. For you, RJ. <laughs> don't Hold get on. aspired, RJ. I texted to him right now. Hold on. No, put that away, Tim. Tim, we better hurry up. Do I'm gonna say guess? no, dude. That was that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tim, I'm gonna you say think? I'm gonna say no uh, as well because this guy was just gonna sign a huge contract. Why would you risk the injury? Like you see the pads, but dude, this is a professional boxer. Are you kidding? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, dude, you bust a rib and you can't play for the majority of the season. Then what? Yeah, I I actually didn't even know that detail until until Tim told me. 
Juju Smith-Schuster, who's a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, was set to sign a major contract before this happened. And it's like, dude, why are you not really thinking about your money here? You're messing with your money. Yeah. But he, but he did take those shots, though. So dumb. So dumb. <laughs> So dumb. That's almost hey, I give that as big a thumbs down as JJ's shoe collection. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> That's awesome. John, we would like you we would like to thank you for coming to onto the show today. Um We got a little something for you, John. We got something oh, for you. We, we want to say thank you. you. Uh this is something that uh we found a little while ago. It's some dope fan art by a local uh, Rip City artist. He, I think he actually moved to uh, Louisiana, but uh, that's my boy Evan M. He goes by Evan M. Oh, yeah, what's dude. Up? So you know him that's already. My, that's my dog, man. Yeah, dude. So we were uh, we bought a few pieces and we wanted to give you one. I don't. Let me know if you already have one. No, I don't have any. I, his stuff is fantastic. I actually Go did. Uh, I did a podcast with him a couple. Uh, I guessed on another show before, and we got to know each other. Oh, that's other. awesome. Oh, that's what's up. But I, so, I, I, I love his I, stuff. I just don't have anything. That's awesome. I saw his work, and I was like, yo, I have got to cop some of these. So anyway, uh, without further ado, we got you a Sheed. Hey. My dog. That's what's up, right? My dog, Sheed and Evan M, and that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it, do, it doesn't come with a frame or anything, but... Oh, I don't want... No, you, know, you gotta you frame got it that. for me. You gotta frame it for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> you I got it, you got it, man. I can, I can do that, but... RJ, there's one thing you gotta, there's one thing you gotta do... <laughs> RJ, I hope you're getting paid for this, dog. They're not even gonna frame my picture. Hey. That's like, hey, that's like giving me a car and not giving me any gas. Well, yeah, that's what happened the last time I bought a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much. No, no, it's all good. So, um, so we're going to hook you up with that. Uh, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to try and hook up our listeners. Uh, so everybody go and check out Evan M, Evan M.com. That's uh, E V A N E M. Uh, he's got some pretty amazing pieces for sale up there. Um, and you can enter in promo code BUSTED on your checkout to get 20% off any purchase. Nice. Um, so, Bucket Busters, also. Good, man. Yeah, helping out those small businesses is great. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Bucket Busters, we have one more. We have a Dame Lillard. RJ, pull up that Dame Lillard if you can. We have a Dame Lillard uh, poster print to give out to you guys. And if yeah. you want a chance to win... Mm-hmm. And this is this is a pretty unique piece too. Uh, if you want to win this poster print, all you have to do is submit a review on our Apple Podcast page or add us on Twitter at Busted Bucket with how you became a fan of the Portland Trailblazers. And we're gonna do the giveaway in two weeks. So within the next yeah. two weeks, hit us up, let us know, and you'll be entered. It's a random drawing, but we'll get that out to you uh, on the uh, episode we're gonna release in two weeks. Yeah, and you know, very, in, very in cool the you guys are doing that, man. Dude, in the next two weeks, we're actually going to read some of the entries. So if you want to just tell your story about how you became a Portland Trailblazer fan, we will we will tell your story on the podcast. We will shout you out. And absolutely. What better man to start out with? I'm going to ask Big John. John, how did you become a Portland Trailblazers fan? Uh, my parents. I mean, growing up playing basketball from the time I remember standing up, man, outside. We had a hoop on the telephone pole. Um, and then everybody coming to our house to watch games. It's ironic that I work for Blazer Broadcasting now. Um, we used to have, back in the day, man, they had Blazer Cable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had to actually yeah. pay per view. You had to pay for the games. And so the weird thing is, that's where I got hooked. Um, they nice. would show them They would show them down at an old movie theater downtown called the Paramount, too. Oh, and yeah. So, so people would go down there and get drunk and watch the games on a, on a movie <laughs> screen. That's My awesome. parents would. But we had we were the only ones in the neighborhood that had Blazer Cable, so people would come over, and my dad would make them put like you know, two bucks in the glass uh, goldfish jar, and then uh, we'd watch the games downstairs. I remember just getting beers from my neighbors and and just watching the games. And back then, the cops used to come around. Portland police used to have Trailblazer trading cards. Oh, really? Yeah, and they were, they weren't like the normal size; they were bigger and glossier. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see the cops <laughs> nowadays; they chase you. Back then, you used to chase them. <laughs> you go, blazer cards, blazer cards, blazer cards. And we'd run up there and they'd, and they'd hand you out uh, blazer Man, cards. Man, they should do that again. Yeah, and that was a blast. And so I remember us always trading blazer cards. And that was, you know, 
early 80s and stuff and i was like 10 years old so mm -hmm. that was my first memory so like i said nice. earlier the fact that i work for him now man it's i got a dream yeah. job yeah that's do, awesome do and you still have any of those cards uh you know what i think they're in a shoebox at my mom's to be honest dude because uh, the card game is blowing up yeah right i see now. that I, I think that, we yeah. all have cards at our mom's. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, for real. That's just where you keep them, right? John, <laughs> I want to thank you again. Thank you for being a friend to the pod and being on the show. Is there anything else that you want to plug before we go? Uh, man, check me out on social media. Twitter, Twitter. I'm not bringing any info. I can't bring any inside info. <laughs> I, just have, I just have fun. But uh, Instagram yeah. is more my game, man. I'm always taking shots wherever I'm at. Uh, obviously, lately it hasn't been too exciting, but yeah, yeah. you know, and, uh, and your pod on the road, yeah, on the road with the team and stuff. So at Big John, oh, I see you guys got that up there. Yeah, I throw some family stuff on there too. But uh, if you go back and scroll, man, there's a lot of stuff. Me and Dame on the road and different pictures of the guys and nice. Uh, yeah, I'm a shoe dork. So you'll see some kicks on there. But uh, and then my my podcast, you guys have uh, motivated me to. Uh, Nice, Hot man. On that, man. Yeah. yeah so thanks, man. Stripping, so high uh, we're going to have some, I'm going to start getting some guys on there. And then just a couple of small businesses, man. And I, I, I don't mean to, but we, look at this. No, take as much time as you want. Yeah, do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dog? Man. Boy, yes. Man. Hey, dudes. Yo. Does, does he sell those? So this is a double one, man. This is dudes grill. It's funny. We were talking about him. Yeah. Uh, then, but then. My boy, his name is Rick, and the company's called Graphletics. Mm -hmm. I've heard -R -A -F of it. Graphletics. Local dude, bomb ass gear, dope hats, t shirts. Graphletics. He's fantastic, man. Graphletics, man. It's, mm -hmm. He's fantastic. He does hats for local businesses during this downtime, during small businesses. He's helping other businesses, and the money goes to it. Oh, so, that's local. Very nice. Cool. And his NBA stuff is fantastic, man. He's got great basketball. If you're a hoop fan, Rick is. He's outstanding, man. The hoodies are dope. Um, yeah, yeah. He's done I think some RJ collab. Just it. Yeah, he's done some collabs with the Blazers, uh, where he's got like the T-shirt or the hat of the night, and his stuff is. Oh, nice. I, I mean, I'm serious, man. His stuff is dope. Uh, and then one other thing, man, right here. Cultural blends. Ball was life. Ball My was boy, life. He opened up a shop on Southeast Hawthorne, and it's all basketball. Oh, and really? It, old school uniforms old school jerseys uh just everything man and it's all about basketball man old video games in there old magazines hats dope. they're dope and the, yeah. he has yeah. another yeah. company he has another company called cultural blends and they do a bunch of dope hats and a bunch of t-shirts and stuff man those are my boys they're 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 fantastic man they got a bunch of cool stuff uh yeah they got great stuff and nice. then uh, other than that there i pimped it out i i sold out uh, <laughs> you sell out boy, one one last one uh <laughs> dope, in, dope. In, index index pdx downtown it's a shoe store my index boy PDX. mike yeah index pdx best shoe store in the city they yeah. got the best the hottest stuff uh mikey and those guys down there they're fantastic man so if you're a sneakerhead and you're looking for dope shoes index pdx is the spot they got That's a bunch of stuff those are like those are my three or four that I always kind of pump, man. Those are my guys. Yeah. Right on. I mean, we'll thank, we'll thanks sure for the info. Out. I mean, we're, we're definitely gonna check it out. And John, mm -hmm. thank you once again. RJ always has to shout out RJ, our video producer, for giving us video, just making everything silky smooth. And our last thank you, of course, goes to our listeners. You know, when we're on Twitter, when we're watching games, you guys interact with us. You guys give us information all the time. You make this show so easy. And with that being said, Tim, what you got to say? That's it for this episode. Don't forget to rate, follow, and subscribe if you're digging what we're saying. Remember to stay safe out there, Rip City. We'll catch you next time on the Busted Bucket Podcast. Thanks for listening.